Click on the images to go to the other four parts of this series. Welcome to the fifth and final installment of my series about drawing the human head from memory. This video will give you a dizzying amount of information on how to draw the head at the three-quarters view. Let's start out by observing what happens when the head turns. Notice what little space the face takes up when the head is turned to profile view. Notice that the back of the head becomes more rounded as the face seems to shrink. Let's take a closer look at the face. The green shape connects the outer two corners of the eye and the outer corners of the mouth. Observe what happens to this trapezoid shape as the head turns from side to side. Notice that as the green shape gets smaller, the back of the head becomes more rounded. Now let's look at a silhouette of the face. Be sure to observe what happens to the silhouette of the face at the three-quarters view. It is no longer an oval shape. There are indentations and protrusions. In the three-quarters view of the head, there's an indentation by the eye and a protrusion at the cheekbone and the mouth. This is due to the underlying bone and muscle structures. Now, let's look at the individual features of the face, starting with the eyes. Notice that the eye shifts in shape as the head turns. When the head is in profile, the shape of the eye looks like a Hershey's kiss turned to the side. As the head turns, it morphs to an almond shape. Since I'm teaching you how to draw the eye in three-quarter view for this video, we will remember that the three-quarters view eye resembles Pac-Man's mouth. Notice that the pupil and iris are more oval-like and there's no white on the inner corner of the eye. Now let's observe the nose. Notice the relationship between the nose and the cheek. In the three-quarters view, the nose is partially covering the cheek and almost to the edge of the face. Notice how the nostrils shift as the head turns. When you draw a head in the three-quarters view, you essentially draw one and a half nostrils. As for the mouth, take a few seconds to notice the changes. The top lip morphs from a flattened M shape from the front to a lightning bolt shape in the three-quarters view. The bottom lip has a squared section and triangles on each side. The ears move from being close to the center of the head from profile view to the edge of the head in front view. In three-quarters view, the ears seem to be at the verge of protruding through the back of the head, but they're not there yet. Now it's time for the demonstration. Since we studied a male head in the first part of the video, let's switch it up and draw a female head. Just follow the directions for each step and also on the shading tutorial. Step 1. Draw the shape that you see. Notice that it's an egg shape with various protrusions and indentations. This is the most difficult step, so take some extra time. Step 2. Notice the rectangular shape. The four dots are the centers of each eye and the corners of the mouth. Place each dot in the appropriate place. Then, about two-thirds of the way down, add a line for the bottom of the nose. Step 3. Add the eyebrows and ears. Step 4. Fill in the eye shape. Remember the Pac-Man rule. Here's a close-up. Step 5. Complete the nose. Notice the solid line leading from the bottom of the nose to the brow. Also, remember the rule about one and a half nostrils. Here's a close-up. Step 6. Complete the mouth. Overall, the mouth looks like a flattened heart shape. For now, put in one solid shape and ignore the rules that you learned before. We will make the rectangular shape on the bottom lip and the lightning bolt shape on the top when we shade. Step 7. Add the hair. Be creative. You don't have to recreate this hairstyle. Welcome to the shading part. I am going to be using a paintbrush and a blending stump to do most of the shading. First thing you're going to see me do is to erase uh, all of the construction lines uh, that uh, we made 
and then you're going to see me, uh, I'm using a, a, a dirty brush, you're going to see me use kind of a dirty brush, when I say dirty I mean it has graphite on it, I've used it for shading before, um, and I am yeah, using uh, actually two brushes uh, to kind of uh, you know, create a basic tone uh, for the head and neck. Um, then I'm going in, I'm going right in with the uh, 6B pencil, and I'm darkening the eyes even more, and going back to that brush, uh, yeah, it's, it's not dipped in anything, it's just uh, the remnants of all of the shading that I've done with it before. It's a bristle brush, um, meaning that it's got hard bristles on it. Um, Robert Simmons number 12, I believe it is, or number 10. Um, anyway, uh, I am just going in with that, and I'm just creating a basic tone. Um, you're seeing me use the, the thin brush uh, to kind of smudge the lines on the side uh, as much as possible. Uh, just so that it, uh, just so I take away as many lines as possible, because the face, uh, the face does not have lines. And I want to eliminate uh, eliminate the lines as much as possible. Uh, there's a very subtle shadow, uh, the subtle shadow that is uh, on the um, the turned side of the face, um, the one that's facing away from us uh, on our left side, um, the uh, the sitter's right side, and I'm making sure to darken that. Um, I have to be careful not to go too dark. The nose is going to be um, one of the lighter parts. The area on the uh, on her left side of the cheek um, to our right side uh, underneath the eye, um, that's going to be the area where there's uh, the most highlights. If you're following along, I would pause it at this point, um, and I would try to catch up to this, and um, you know, press play as soon as you're comfortable again, and just do that periodically uh, throughout the video. Uh, throughout the shading part of the video, that is. Um, I am putting the darks in the hair. And I'm making sure that everything is smooth. She's a, uh, a young girl uh, in the picture, so uh, that means that I have to uh, be really careful, have like very smooth gradations. Um, as you get older, um, there's a little bit more differentiation, and the skin has more... Um, it, more uh, differentiation to it. After I uh, put in uh, a basic tone for the hair, you know, then I'm using the brush to just basically, uh, you know, create some texture. And I'm also using the eraser for that. And I am smoothing stuff out with uh, just a regular pencil and also my fingers. And I'm creating a highlight. Now I'm being very subtle. You can definitely do too much. You really don't want to do uh, too much with this. And I'm putting on my finishing touches and we are almost done. This takes uh, time and practice, but once you once you get it, you'll never forget it. I hope this series really helped you. I put a lot of work into it, so um, be sure to check out all five uh, in this series. Here's uh, one through four. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I hope you learned something.